Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Hey everybody, I am here with James and Jordan, Scott and Jeff. And welcome to another episode of Veritox. I am super excited to have you guys hear uh, the interview that we had this week. And uh, Jeff, tell us about who we had on the show. Man, we had the awesome privilege to have an incredible singer with us. His name is Anthony Evans. And uh, many of you have heard him sing. I mean, this guy, his range is incredible. Mm. He kind of starts where most people end. He's you know? <laughs> Just an incredible singer. That is very true for me. <laughs> that's right i'm telling you what um this guy's not so much more than just a singer you know he's yeah. a producer he's he's a, an arranger he's a writer this guy's an entrepreneur i mean he really has his hands in a lot of different things and you'll hear a little bit about that today but you also may know him as the son of the wonderful and incredible dr tony evans and also his sister is pretty well known herself Priscilla Shira. She's a wonderful speaker and author. And so uh, it's really great for us to be able to have uh, Anthony with us today. Well, I'm really excited to hear this interview. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. And like Jeff said, he's an incredible singer. But um, to me, what stands out is he's just one of the friendliest and kindest yeah, people. That I've he ever really met. is. Um, so I think you guys are really going to enjoy hearing what he has to say as Jordan and James interview him today. So without any further ado, please welcome our friend, Anthony Evans. Um, we're here today with a just a incredible, incredible singer and a friend of ours, Anthony Evans. Uh, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here with you. Glad to be here with both of you guys. Yeah. Well, we're, we're honored that you take the time, man. Thank you so much. No problem. We we a lot of us have lots of time right now. So <laughs> either way, I would have taken it, but this made it way easier, you know? Yep, so, for sure. We do, and you're 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 not in LA right now. That's you're in Dallas, right? Yeah, yeah. I came back. I just jumped on a plane. When all this started, I was like, "Let me be close to my family." Yeah. I was thinking that anyway, with everything that's going on with the loss of our mom. I was just like, "I need to be close." I was thinking that, and then this started, and I was like, "Oh, bye." Like, I'll, I'll yeah. see y'all when I see you. Yeah, it's a Return. it's a pretty simple decision to to want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Are you staying with Priscilla? I'm, I'm, God, no, I'm at an Airbnb. I'm, I'm here. I'm currently at Priscilla's house. Oh, gotcha. My brother-in-law's house. But I um, have got an Airbnb. Oh, that's my alarm to make sure I'm on with y'all. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, All right. Yes, I'm here. And um, here you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got an Airbnb when I first got here because my dad was feeling under the weather and this whole corona stuff happened. And we were, so I was like, let me stay away not away from him because he was feeling ill. I didn't want to be the yeah. reason why anybody got sick. And I was just learning how all this stuff worked. And I just came from LA. So I was like, I'm getting an Airbnb for these first 14 days or so to make sure Priscilla yeah. had lung surgery in January. I was just like, eh, this is too much. So yeah. I'm at my own place and, and then I come visit family. Every yeah, day. that's great, that's man. Yeah. That's very yeah. helpful. That makes me want to jump right into your Enneagram. <laughs> oh, helper. I'm a helper. I don't, Enneagram's like such a, a CCM Nashville thing. I didn't, I didn't hear about it until I came to Nashville and I was like, what's happening right now? Why are we all talking in numbers? <laughs> I'm like, James, James, aren't you a two? Also, I'm a three wing two. Okay. That's what I am. Oh, are you? Helper achiever? Or what is it? Helper? What is this? What is I'm this? a achiever helper. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm a helper achiever, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, we want to help people and achieve while we do it. Yes, exactly. It's gotten me a lot of trouble <laughs> until recently when I got healthy. And then I help people in a healthy way. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Well, I want, to, I want to get to that for sure because we want to talk about the big things that you're doing like in life and goals, yeah. dreams and things you've already done that are awesome. Um, but uh, I wanted to touch, I mean, you and I have known each other for, I was thinking about it the other day. It's been 20, about 20 years. It's been 20 years. You were a child. You met, and because you traveled in truth with, you know, beautiful my sister, sister my, who's hilarious. a little bit older than me. What'd you say? I said your beautiful, hilarious sister. Yeah. Beautiful, hilarious Janae. She's, she's a reason why I'm funny at all. Is if, if I get any of it, it's because she taught me. I love it. 
were younger how, how to be funny. Um, um, but yeah, you, you traveled and for, do you want to talk about that at all? A little bit, just touch on. Like where me and Janae met and all that stuff? Yeah, like it, just what truth was like. And cause that was pretty much, that was your first foray. In special. Like was it, Kirk came after, right? Yeah, Kirk came after that. So I started in, in truth and um, I heard this group of crazy singers and I was like, I was at Liberty University, heard somebody played an album and I was like, who are these people singing like this? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, and I'd never heard of Truth before, yeah. and uh, that was like a super group of Truth people. Like it was just a monster super group. And so I was like, whatever that group is, then after college, I'm gonna see if they need people. And then that's how I met your sister. We traveled together for two years, and that was boot camp. I didn't realize that I would learn so much about, um, you know, what so many different angles, but perseverance and pushing through and learning different audiences and how to make sure you're you're being what they need for that day, not what you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when you're doing church music, it's it's different. You're you're going there to meet them and make sure they have the worship experience they want. Not like here's my art, deal with it. Like <laughs> that's not. The, I, you know what I mean? Right. So, Truth ta taught me all that, and then after that, I left and went with with Kirk Franklin, who I met before Truth. He told me he asked me before Truth to come with him, and I said no, I want to go do this group first because in my mind, I thought I, I'd set my mind on doing that. So he said, whenever you're done, just come sing with me, and he meant okay. it. I guess. Did you meet Kirk at your dad's church? Yes. Okay. I, I was wondering if that was the connection there. Yeah. He started going to my dad's church when I was in college. And he heard me say, you know, he asked me to sit. My, my dad was like, my son sings. He's at Liberty. He's singing. You know, all that stuff. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. He sat at the piano and played. And he stopped and goes, hey, so I want you to be a part of my, and you know, people talk all the time. Sure. And yeah. Like they, but he wasn't just talking. Like, seriously, we, for the last 20 years, we've done stuff together on and off like tonight when i get done with this i'm going to him so we're going to be on uh, steph curry's worship night or something nice uh, on some instagram worship yeah, so we all that to say is we're just still close you know yeah that's awesome well that's a big idea right there going to do something with steph curry <laughs> i mean it is goodness that's pretty cool man really quick i would like to ask about well I, first off, you don't know this about me, but I'm actually a big fan of yours as well as a friend. So, like, I've listened to all your records, dude. Like, I Thanks, Jordan. love your stuff. And, like, I wanted to talk, like, the first album that you ever did was Even More, right? Yes. And you were seven, probably. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I'm only a couple years younger than you. So I know this feels like so much younger, but I guess. <laughs> it's definitely in, it, I was at least in high school. So, okay. okay, got you. Um, but I and, and you know what, you were no matter what I was listening to, you were always on that playlist. And I really liked the even more album. And I was thinking about your collection of albums. You know, you're only thirty years old or something like that, but you have a, a pretty decent collection. Uh -huh. And I was thinking about them and I've listened to all of them and they're all good. There's not one album that isn't really, really good. Mm -hmm. And Thank I was you, thinking Richard. about how much like your latest album, which we'll talk probably some more a little bit in a little bit altered is just like your, your first album was just as good as altered was like, I have favorites that I've listened to. Uh -huh. I'm grilling right now, aren't I? No, it's okay. I mean, you're not really. I mean, I get it. I get no, no, I do. I, I'm just a huge fan, and I I wanted to get into like a little bit of the songwriting because you've been writing, yeah, this stuff, even from your first record all the way up till now, right? I mean, yeah, I didn't know that I was a writer at the very beginning. I was told, Anthony, you're gonna have to go in a room because listen, when I was in Truth and Kirk, that's singing other people's music, that's making other people's music good. That, yeah. That's that's yeah. what that is. Nobody ever asked you to write, put your pen on a paper. It was like, sing this. So, which is nothing, not, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. When I first started the, the artist thing, the president of the label, I was with Jeff, Jeff Mosley, who's like a mentor of mine in general. He said, I need to hear your heart now. And I was like, what do you mean? I'll just sing the, like, I'll sing the song. He was like, no, I'm setting up writing sessions. And I, at that point, felt like I'm not a writer. But he set me up with a beautiful young lady who I love so much. My first songwriting session ever was with Jenny Owens. Y'all remember her? Yes, we love Jenny. Yes. So I was with Jenny Owens and she said, hey, open your journal and just like read some stuff to me. And I was reading stuff and she just started to play the piano. And I was like, oh, this, this is songwriting. This is song, like, and so we wrote that together. And, and I felt like, I mean, I'm contributing. Like I'm saying the next line. Yeah. 
doing it. And then melody wise, I didn't realize I had so much, so many melodies in me because I was always singing other people's, but that, yeah. collective, that collective of all those melodies that had been in my heart and life and mind for all these years started to make me make my own. And so yeah. I wrote a song called Restore Me. And it was just basically like my journal made to rhyme and to music. And then at that point I was like, oh, I can do both. I can do, my art can be putting my, my mind on a song that's already been written and my arrangement on that song or yeah. sit down and, and write your heart. And with what I do, um, I have to be real about my, like when I'm doing Lifeway events with my sister and it's an arena of women, I can't, I can't try to introduce them to all my original music that day. I had to be, <clears throat> to mix in stuff they know with new stuff. And then that's when I started to recreate worship songs to fit the vibe of the room because yeah. commercial music, and that's uh, commercial contemporary Christian music does not always fit the nature of the room, especially way back because it was sure. not as worship driven as it is now. Right. Yeah. So I had to go, this room is like, because of my family's ministry, which I'm grateful for, where, you know, the room is like half Baptist, half Pentecostal, half white, half black. There's well, 40% this and 10%. It's everything. Then I had to, this is a whole long story. I'm sorry if I'm talking too much, Wait. but I had to, what's so great is, the, I don't know what a better way to say this. I had to be myself because what happened earlier on in my music career is I was never CCM enough and I was never gospel enough. I was in the yeah. middle. Yeah, and sure. in the middle was making the commercial side of my career, the commercial side, very hard because I didn't strum a guitar and I didn't, because that was right when like my friends came out, like Jeremy Camp was out and they were like, Anthony, just grab a guitar, please, so we can put you out with them. And I was like, I don't want to just hold it and not, and not be plugged in because I don't really know what I'm doing. Sure. And then gospel, I wasn't just screaming like, Rah! I wasn't all that. So I had to carve out, I had to keep walking the path that I knew was for me, even when nobody was caring about it. And then now when I'm singing to whatever audience and, and I'm like, this is the path I was supposed to be on. It was like a moment where um, all, all, everything caught up with where God wanted me to be in the first, like right now I feel like I'm so glad I didn't compromise who I was to be popular in contemporary Christian music. Because yeah. then I, even if I would have blown up, I would have been stuck singing songs that really weren't me just yeah. to have attention from people. I would have to do that for the rest of my career. Like yeah. inside me rolling my eyes like, man, I really don't like this music. And then right. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of grateful that commercial wasn't the way that everything went because I would have had to compromise myself to be commercial and that's not success. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious about when you started writing <laughs> songs with Jenny yeah, he asked you to open your journal. That's a very vulnerable thing to do. Like, did it frighten you to put that? It made me uncomfortable for sure. But I've yeah. always been a guy who is like, I love adventure. That's the bottom sure. line. If I have horses and if, if there's a trail, I'm the first guy to be like, I'm going to go off this trail and see what's over here. Oh, I yeah. found a creek. I'm going to jump that. Yeah. Try to, yeah. Like, that's my thing because I know that the exhilarating feeling after you face your fears is a thing. It's right. just thing for me so yeah. uh, so I um it was very weird to open my journal but I thought this is Jenny Owens you love her album open your journal like what's wrong yeah. with you you know, you know what I mean like so so that's what it's been since then is there's a few writers that I will sit down with Cindy Morgan is another one like I don't remember it's growing love up love Cindy Morgan yeah I just I will sit with her and without fail it'll be like an hour and a half and we're like well there's another one I mean she's just so yeah. I, I love it. I, I love it now. And it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. Right now. It's, yeah. I love that. Who is somebody that you would love to write with that you've never written with? I met her the other day in a bagel shop in, in, in LA. I was just walking into the bagel shop and I looked up and she has worked with friends of mine before. <clears throat> she said, Hey, what's your name? And I said, I'm Anthony. And I asked her her name because I, I knew it, but I just wanted to be like, Oh, what's your name? And she's like, Diane Warren. I want to write with her. What? Diane. That's who I want to write with. She's oh my God. Yeah. There's a friend of mine named Yebba, or her name's Abby, but Yebba is what yes. she's like. And Abby has written with, well, first, yeah. They, they have songs that probably, I don't know, will ever be released, but they are mind blowing songs. So I, that's my dream goal is to write with Diane Warren or just to sing. I don't even have to write it because I know she's the, the kind of music that that heart like oh yeah I'm down so Diane Warren 
How, did you make inroads? In, in oh, that? I, like I have, like I could call her now, but I would never just call. I like, she was like, take my number, make sure, because we need to talk about this. You know, she's, she's, and I wasn't trying to do business. She was just like, oh, take my number. You, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how she was comfortable enough to give me your number, but we'll, we'll see. You know, I don't, I don't, we'll see. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. And you just, good things happen at coffee shops. And in, in Los Angeles, listen, my whole experience, which we can get to, I, I ended up in LA. I was supposed to be there for three months, and that was eight years ago. So it's oh, it, wow. a phone call that came to do a project for three months, and it just has me doing a whole bunch of things that are so outside. I love what I get to do, Christian music yeah. and, and worship and all. That is my center. That's the hub. But then the, yeah. there's folks that came out of me being in LA and on The Voice and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you... Uh, you probably talk about this a lot. Do you want to talk about the voice a little bit? I don't mind at all because it was an amazing, odd, ex an odd time and an odd experience. But it was so great. I loved it. Yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I remember and I watched you when I mean, we were friends. So I was like, my friends on the show, so I gotta watch. And it was pretty cool, man. It was pretty cool. I think. Uh, I think at the end of the day, you got robbed. Uh, <laughs> not continuing on, but I think that uh, you turned it into a pretty pretty successful career just step zoning from that yeah. opportunity and, and and building off of it and I don't think there's very few people that have ever been on that show that have even won or have built something as cool as you have yeah yeah I'm, I'm grateful for it and, and it's all about it in life in general you get a bunch of no's all the time some of the best actor friends I know some of the best I mean people who are household names now at some point we're told no a bunch you know what i mean so i i um the, so the not not going forward on the show it wasn't about that as much as a lot of the stuff that happened when i was there it took blinders off as related to what i was used to doing i'd never been outside of the four walls of a church like sitting, yeah never i'd never done that so sitting at christina aguilera's house and talking to her over christmas dinner about life and then she was like so what so this is no no cameras. It was just us hanging out as the Chris, team Christina. She was yeah. like, "Do you need to? I need to tell you something. Like you have a you have a very unique situation going on." And she compared it to her second album, which was so weird to be talking about because her second album was called Stripped or something. You know what I mean? So I, like, oh, <laughs> I remember that album. Yeah, you know. But she said I was so scared when I made that album because everybody expected me to be this little pop, pop princess. I had I was the genie yeah. in the bottle girl. And what yeah. a girl was. That was not what I did. But she said, I had to make a decision that I'm going to walk this trail, even though I have no idea where it's going. And mm -hmm. I ended up becoming a trailblazer. And she's like, Anthony, I know what you do is different, but that's you. Like, yeah. do you. Don't, don't conform to what you think gospel is telling you in CCM. People can smell a rat. And then Jewel, this is Jewel. Christina's saying that. And then Jewel kicks in and goes, people can smell a rat. Like, if you start being disingenuous to yourself to be popular, yeah people will smell a rat. So you yeah. keep being, and this is like speaking into my whole ministry was Julia yeah. Aguilera and they never aired it. So those moments, I remember walking out of that room. Goosebumps, keep going. Oh, I, remember, I was like, what? I remember walking out of that room and telling one of the producers, thank you so much. I don't know what's gonna happen on this show. I have no idea. But I was discouraged coming to the show because I actually went because I got dropped from the record label because I was making like I tried to make a perfect pop Christian album and that didn't work. Like my first album did way better than that. And they were trying to build me up. So I, they obviously business reasons, they had to let me go. And I went to the voice after that. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I was kind of discouraged just doing it, you know, cause I got time and I can do what I want. But, uh, when I left that show, I was like, Oh, and that's where I kicked into overdrive as it relates to my calling, my, my mm -hmm. career, my, what I'm supposed to be doing, where my piece is, what success really is. Success is yeah. not checks and number one songs. Because after you get number one songs and checks, you can't go write a check for peace. You can't go get peace with all that. So yeah. I had to realize, what am I at peace doing? Whether people are applauding or not, am I at peace? Because at the end of the day, yeah, that's what success is to me. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's the voice in a, in a very quick nutshell. There's so much that happened there. It was, yeah. That was a good <laughs> nutshell, man. Um, so you talked about finding peace and stuff and you've um been doing this instagram show mm -hmm. that is another one of your uh, big ideas i would say it's called the power of perspective right? yeah yeah 
mm-hmm. and I, I have to confess I've only gotten to see one, but I'm I'm looking forward to watching some more of them. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? And what that yeah, was? I just decided like I, I'm a emo dude. Like I'm just an emotional dude. We're artists, and blah, blah, blah. I look like a linebacker. But some days I'm like, oh my god, I'm not feeling <laughs> all this stuff. So I uh, I decided to that I wanted to do therapy, and I and I you know Tony Evans is my dad. What do you need therapy for? Like I, I get yeah. that, but I wanted to couple, and people get weird when I say this. I know scriptural truth. But I believe that there are practical ways that you need to, that you need to, to actually implement. When you're somebody like me who can get caught up in emotion real quick, there are practical steps that it helps for you to talk to somebody. Like my therapist is like a licensed psychotherapist. She doesn't come from, she's not like a Christian. She, oh, hold on, let me, let me say this the right way. It's not like going to the church for counseling. She acknowledges faith and acknowledges my faith, God. Like she, she gets, she told me actually in one, in one session, I've never had anybody in, in a session that is so watched by God. Like I feel him in this room with us right now as we talk. Wow. Like, and and the, her base was not that. So um, to hear those things from somebody who's coming from like a, a, you know, a psychoanalytical spot, that's powerful in and of itself. But then practical things. Like if I say, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. God wants me to do this. She'll be like, what are the practical ways we're going to walk out what God's told you to do? Mm. And, when I say something, she's like, I really think about that. Does that make sense? Given the fact that you're saying you want peace, do you really need that person in your life? And at, at all. Like, I mean, I needed that. And I thought people can't always get to something like this. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with Jenny in opening my journal 15, 20 years ago. I'm going to open now this, this digital version and let people into these sessions on topics that I believe that they need to hear. Yeah. Feel. Yeah. 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 So that's the I've, power perspective with Stacey Kyle. I love that. And I've got to confess, I haven't been able to watch it yet. And I, but I can't wait because I've been on my own therapy journey for the last few years. And as someone who grew up in the church and as someone who memorized scripture and yeah, yeah. I had so much, I had to deconstruct yeah. from that to so- actually uh, begin to feel and understand God's love and grace. Like I knew it here. I didn't know it here. Absolutely. And there was so much shame and so much, so much hurt and trauma that had gone undealt with that kept me from being able to receive God's love and grace. Cause I didn't think I was worthy of it. Yeah. You know? And, and it's, and I feel like singers in particular are very susceptible to thoughts of shame because we derive so much of our worth from what we do yeah yeah yeah. and it's really hard sometimes to separate when the applause isn't there am i worthy of love and belonging yeah you know all that so i'm anxious to see your perspective (laughs) coming from the industry and just the path that you've walked down yeah i can't wait to watch man i love it i'm excited for you to see it i'm excited yeah yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Oh. Like, what I, I know for people who know you and have and have uh, are familiar with your family's ministry, we know that your mom passed away recently. And was this kind of birthed out of her passing, or I was doing know? it before that. I, I, I was I was doing I've been doing therapy for years, but but um, awesome. and I think me and Stacy were talking about doing the 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 whole show before. But before that, but being in therapy in general, to me, I look at it as, as like taping your ankles before a game or like, or, or what yeah. or that before you sing or making sure the tires, the air in your, the air's in your tires before you to go on a long drive. Like it's very yeah. preventative for me as it relates to what is coming. So when that stuff right. happened with my mom, my family in general, the last two years, it's just been like crazy loss. I mean, it's, it's wild. But yeah. I feel like I was more prepared. You can never be fully prepared, but I was more prepared because I'm not dealing with me un, undealt with and all these now situations are coming at me that are crazy. So right. it, was, it was before that, but I, but I just believe in taking preemptive measures, period. But also when you're in ministry or when you're traveling or when you have family and, and when you're, de- you need to just make sure you're, you're situated for, for yeah. the journey you're, we're all on. Yeah. We met your mom, um, one time we were we had just finished uh sandy's tour and we were on the cruise and i met her in the elevator 
and she was so sweet and, and so kind and so unassuming you know she didn't come in announced or anything i just thought so highly of her and just loves that cruise i mean she would be like going by myself i'm gonna have my have a great time and miss sandy would be like are you just like here alone like you just you just hop yeah she's like absolutely i love it yeah. uh it was so she was so kind man yeah 100 yeah, percent that's 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 neat. I love little nuggets that people can drop your way that you you didn't know about, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might, like when somebody can tell me something about my dad that I didn't know, it's always like that's a good day. Yeah. But I mean, oh, I Jordan, I get it. It's fun to hear stuff like that. I I have never um, I've never really done therapy, but I've kind of kind of done my own therapy through podcasts. You know, where I just like sit and listen and kind of psychoanalyze myself and try to put things into practice yeah. but James obviously James has done therapy and he's kind of encouraged me to like maybe look at that and mm -hmm. you know you are too huh no I mean it's, I'm okay I've, I've dealt with anxiety and depression in the past like a lot totally and but and somehow I've just I don't know been able to work through it but I would totally probably like to talk to somebody on a personal note, which is, I know we're not just me and you talking on the phone. I tell your sister this all the time. I can't imagine going through what I went through at 40, at 13 and 10, or whatever. Yeah, Janae was 13, right? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. I so, yeah, so when I talk, I, and, and when me and your sister were talking about the loss of my mom, all I could think about, not belittling my loss, but I couldn't help but think about what y'all went through when y'all were kids. Like, and, and, and my heart even more, like I could cry now talking about, cause y'all are my people. This is not just like people we're talking to, like I'm, this is 20 years in. So my heart just, just breaks for people who've experienced loss, especially people who I know well, who were kids, who, you know, Janae had to sing, if you could see me now, every, no, no, no. She sang, uh, he's able every night and was just like, uh, or she had to listen if you can see me now these songs that were written uh, for your dad I mean it's just a, it's a lot so I I admire you having not done a bunch of therapy and stuff and being able to hold it together and do ministry I can't ima I cannot imagine not having done anything in here and face something like that like I would not be sitting where you are so kudos to you and your sister I think I think it was probably my sister who was probably <laughs> You're like, it was more Janae and Debbie, but you know, okay, I'm just kidding. No, but I, either way, I'm like, either way, I'm proud of you. Uh, well, thanks, man. It's really nice. I still probably need therapy, but that's really nice. Um, man, well, can you okay if we pivot here to something else that you're, you're doing, like one of your other big ideas? And feel free to talk about your own big ideas, and we're going to get there, but I wanted to ask you about Sherman James. Okay. Kind of. That is your production company that you started. When did you start that, and what? It's been about three years, and it was it was. Um, I was getting asked in Los Angeles. I first, I fast kind of rewind, but I'll go I'll go quick through this. Came to LA to start doing uh, session stuff for just for fun. It was like on the weekends I'll go do worship with my family or whatever, and then during the week I was like doing sessions for Glee. That show, that show was still on TV, and then that turned into. I think it was like Celine and Mariah, like all these crazy names were coming up across my email every couple of days to go do stuff for. And it was like, this is so much fun. But then I started getting asked, like, Anthony, they started to hear my ideas. And they were like, can you help us put stuff together? Like, can you? And so that, cha that changed it to where, and at that point in LA, you need to have it together. You can't just be like, yeah, I'll do it. It's sure. fun. It's a hobby. No, you have to come knowing what you're doing. So I kind yeah. of established a kind of a surname. Sherman and James are my grandfather's names. And they're kind of the ones who made decisions in our family's life that changed the trajectory, the trajectory of our whole family. So Sherman James Productions is them. So I just started doing stuff under that umbrella, thinking it would be like, no big deal. But then I got asked by Kanye to do um, the song called Ultra Light Beam, like years ago on his uh, Life of Pablo album. And that's right when he, like the gospel thing, Christian thing, and we were all like, oh, but, but <laughs> we, we he's not playing. But we didn't, but I, and after that, different hip hop artists started to ask me to do stuff. And it was at a level where I needed an umbrella that was official and I needed to make sure it was good. And then me and my sister were touring together and I, this is crazy. I resented the fact early on that in Christian music, I wasn't accepted or whatever, but I didn't let it stop me. 
So I kept moving forward in that process. I learned, you know, I learned stuff like here's the bus company, here's the lighting company, here's the, mm-hmm. here's the, here's the relationship. I didn't know I was building Sherman James back then. Me not mm-hmm. quitting was me building my production company that I didn't even know would exist years yeah. ago. So fast forward, all me and my sisters towards my family's events are done under the umbrella of Sherman James Productions. Um, and so it's just, it's kind of morphed into this, this all encompassing family thing that yeah. I just started. It's, it's awesome. Brilliant. I mean, it really is. It's just, yeah. it's entrepreneurial spirit. You're not just a musician, you're an entrepreneur and just singing makes me bored. Like just singing an hour a day. I'm like, I'm so bored. And your uncle knows this so well. Cause back in truth, I was like that. I would, be like, is there anything else I can do? Like, I can't wait until seven o'clock every day to do something. So yeah. he made me road manager back then. Cause I was like, let's, let's, I need something else. Yeah. I've just always been that way. So like Train. along with Sherman James and just the other things that you've done, what have been some of the biggest obstacles for you, whether that's internally external op- obstacles, like things that you've had to overcome. I've had to overcome being codependent. Okay. You've seen, because that became an obstacle in my life. The helper in me. Yeah. I want to help people, but it was a selfish help because I was helping them to make me feel good about me. And then I was doing it so much so that I was getting myself, I was like when I was, I was a lifeguard years ago and they told me, Anthony, do not swim up on people. Don't get that close. You get a safe distance and you throw them the tools they need to stay afloat. Mm, yeah. You go to keep them above water. They are going to push you under. But I wanted to be Superman and swim up on everybody, the proverbial swim up on everybody. Yeah. And I was drowning. So in that drowning, I didn't have time to, to take care of myself and my career and things that were coming that I didn't know about. So sure. when I worked on that codependency stuff and therapy and all that, and, uh, and with my relationship with the Lord, obviously, um, that freaked me up to start clearing I call it clearing the runway or clearing the table. Like growing up, my mom would always say, clear the table, I made dinner. If we don't take our homework off the table, we wouldn't get the hot meal that was on the stove waiting for us. If we didn't clear the place, we would not get to taste what was being made for us. And I used to keep my life cluttered with stuff and just stuff. And I would miss something hot the Lord was preparing for me. Mm -hmm. So my biggest obstacle when I overcame that, like when you clear the table and you get a filet set in front of you, it's real easy to clear the table the next time. Like you're like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what happened in my life and careers. I just started to, that obstacle, I overcame the obstacle of, of, of getting in my own way with, yeah. uh, with, in, in was, situation. was learning how to say no a big part of that? Oh yeah. Priscilla Shire taught me that. Like, really? Oh yeah. My sister has a very like, uh, Anthony, when you say yes to that, those opportunities, you have to yeah. literally, you're always saying no to something else. When you say yes, you're saying a simultaneous no. So yeah. what are you saying no to? Is you doing 30 events in, in 40 days? You're, are you saying no to internal peace by doing that? Is it worth it? And then, I would, then I'd be like, no, that's not worth it. And she's also like, you're going to be fine. Sometimes as singers and artists, we're like, we got we to gotta take it while we can. She's like, Anthony, yeah. it's 20 years later. You, you're going to get called. Like, yeah. And you'll probably get called once you start saying no. You'll get called for more specific things that are related to exactly what you want to be doing. Right. Because you're not doing random stuff just to be doing it. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Good for you for learning that. I'm still trying to learn how to say no. <laughs> you get there. You're younger than me. You're almost yeah. there. <laughs> I have to say no to myself. Yeah, I get that's it. what I have to say no to. Because I, I want to do it all, you know. Yeah. Totally. Ah. That's crazy. I'm with you. Well, that's really cool. I, I wanted to ask you specifically about what well you i've watched a couple of your music videos recently that i hadn't seen mm-hmm. there was a really awesome one um i think it was see I, think it was, I found you oh i found you yeah that one was really cool thank you it's beautiful you could tell that was los angeles yeah right? i mean uh, yeah. and that was just one and i think it was directed by rock jacobs mm-hmm. was and i think you've done a couple of videos with him uh, for example, that was just spectacular. I would really like to do music. I, didn't know. I like, let Rock do whatever he wanted to. And I, that's what happened. When you live in Los Angeles, everybody works, operates on such a monster level. I let him do yeah. whatever he wanted. We just talked about it. And then he takes me to the top of the building. Oh, 
He takes it to the top of the building and is like, perform to that camera. Oh and, I, and he's out. I um, want one. And I know. And a helicopter flies in with a cameraman hanging out of it. I was like, Rob. Was that a helicopter? Like, I think was he, no, that was that, 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 like a helicopter flew in with a dude with harness um, flying out. And I was like, am I Diddy? Like, what's happening? Like, <laughs> oh, this, <laughs> going on. like this is this is too much. Well, I think we could probably link these music videos when we share this video. But if not, that video is called I Found You. Yes. Right? And they can go look that one up on YouTube and watch it because it needs more views than already the bajillions that it has right now. Yeah. But, um, what was your favorite music video to, to do? My favorite music video has probably been Mercy Tree because, sorry, Mercy Tree because um, at that point, um, Mark Burnett let me use the footage from the Son of God movie to do a video. Nice. Because the, meeting him with the voice, um, he knew, my fa he just knew who our family was and all that stuff, which is so amazing. And I asked his office, Son of God just came out, and I played them the song, and they were like, yes, use our footage for that. So to go, we filmed at Vasquez Rocks in, in L.A., which looks like Israel, and we intermixed some of the footage from the movie, and I was like, who gets to do this? Like, who gets to yeah. do him? And he'd be like, yeah, you know? That, so that was probably, probably Mercy Tree. Yeah. That's, that's really awesome. cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And that's what a connection Mark Burnett is. I mean, that guy, that guy that Shark Tank, right? I mean, oh, serious. I know. Here, talk about big ideas. <laughs> um <laughs> what uh what are you pursuing now like what is your next big thing that you maybe want to tell us about that you're not under an nda i know i'm like oh man there's one that's huge but i can't talk about it yet but it's, it's like <laughs> i'm not like nda nda but kind of so yeah. but but it's it's a it's a project that i can say this it is a project that is um birthed out of a dream not, uh, birthed out of a desire and kind of a dream that my mom had for our family, mm. so I can say. And so to be able to do that now in her honor is just oh. huge. And that's why that's huge. And then um, yeah. and other than that, the, the LA thing, I've kind of pressed pause on LA to be here with my family during all this. So, and LA yeah. just stopped anyway. So that always, there's always stuff happening there. Uh, but this stuff with my family is the, the, the ultimate. Like planning the tour, the tours with me and my sister this fall. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the other big thing is that is that fervent 2020 yes okay and yeah. how how big is that like that's not till the end of the year right so you're still yeah. we were supposed to do some in may but you know we're gonna hold off right and, um we are going to do some in the fall cool. nice okay awesome. it's tough right now to know when anything is gonna get back to normal yeah yeah so we're just gonna i'm just gonna enjoy this moment as much yeah. as I can. well we were gonna ask you you know what it was like to find joy in the pursuit of your big idea but it seems to me like you've got a pretty good like idea and grasp of how you keep yourself happy and peaceful and joyful in the pursuit of the many ideas that yeah it's just about to me i find joy in trying mm. yeah I find joy in trying and not everything works. I mean, I've been told no a bunch. Yeah. But I find joy in like, at least you, you try. Because after every like five or six tries, I mean, it's the same thing if you're doing anything, whatever it is, you know, that growing up playing t-ball, you try to hit the ball and you'd hit the sand, you'd hit everything. And that one time you make solid contact, maybe after 10 tries, it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, that was so great. It's like, I have that feeling now when I try whatever it is, 10 times yeah. I'm gonna hit the wrong thing. But once I make that perfect contact, it's like, that was so worth it. Yeah. And keep sharpening the skill. That's just, yeah. mm -hmm. It can be so hard to do that at times yeah. because it takes being brave. And it actually is a very vulnerable thing to try something new. You yeah. know? Unless you try it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, go for it. Unless you try it not looking through the window of your limitations. Yes. You try it knowing that God, you do what you can and God will do what you can't, then it's not as scary. Yeah. It's like, here are my five loaves and two fish, God. Yeah, totally. I'm going to do they what are. I can. Yeah. Well, man, so, uh, that, we that end, <laughs> yeah. so we typically end these doing some rapid fire okay. questions. Is that okay with you? That's good. Let's do okay, it. Okay, so I'm going to do the first few, and then Jordan's going to pick up and kind of 
take it out for us. Okay. okay. A concert you'll never forget. I'm sorry. I, just, I should rapid fire this. Probably Buble. Buble. Okay. It was just so accurate and so good. But yeah. there's something else I can't, I'm, I'm not, I can't think of right now. But keep going. It's a tough one. Last one for me. Okay. Favorite author. Oh, Tony Evans. It has to be. Yeah. You know. Comma, besides your father. Oh, favorite <laughs> author besides my father. Or your sister. <laughs> oh, man. I know. I'm like, oh, man. Can't be any family members. Probably Larry Crabb. Okay. I wrote a book called Inside Out and, like, teaching you how to love, like, loving yourself. And then you can love others purely and good. And Larry that Crabb. Good change a game change he's a psychologist that's see i love all that kind of stuff i love people with letters after their name yes all right yes so okay it's, it's my turn now so who is your this is a tough one this is as hard as the last question who's your favorite singer of all time anybody living or gone oh yeah mm, can we do that one in a second because there's there's somebody i'm thinking about where i'm just like you're just a monster it's okay. Mm, that's hard. That's hard. Okay. It's I know. It's, it was a mean question. Um, okay. What is one thing you love about being on tour? Family. Nice. I'm on a bus with my sister, yeah. Right. Okay. That's a good answer. Um, something that people get wrong about you. That's a tough um, one. They... <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of introverted like I don't I'm very much like my like little circle of friends and family and they don't know that because I can I come off like this but at the end of the day I'm very much like that so they think I'm an extrovert and I'm interesting okay I got you I'm the same way actually yes, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I, yeah I, I people think I'm an extrovert but in actuality my circle is very and I'm introverted and I've learned that about myself I don't know it's a, on my journey yeah, of, of self psychotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, what's something you're deeply, deeply grateful for? Um, I think it just has to be family again. I'm trying to think of another way to say it, but the fact the family that I'm in, I feel like is a very unique situation. I don't take for granted. Okay, who is the most famous person you've ever worked out with? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate saying all their names. I oh, I know, I know. No, they're not gonna watch it. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, my gym is probably ugh, bring me some at the same name. Probably <laughs> uh, Chris Pratt or Demi Lovato. Yeah, I was, I was, I was coaching that question because I, I know I'm like, oh. Uh, <laughs> but we in the gym, we don't act, we don't, we don't care about all that stuff. So it's yeah. very much like we don't think about it. Until we leave and people ask us stuff like that. <laughs> James and I both go to Lifetime in Franklin, and I was like on the treadmill next to Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC, and I was like, I wanted to be like, hey man, listen, you're in a boy band, I'm in kind of a man band. Like, <laughs> let's just talk. I didn't say anything. I love it. I wish that I did, though. That is so funny. Um, that's so fun. I, we kind of, I was going to ask you what your next big idea is, but you kind of have already told us all your next big ideas. Yes. So, I mean, this has been so fun. I love it. I'm glad, I'm glad we did this. Glad it worked out. And yeah, I'm man. Glad. Thank you for doing this. What, um, is there any mediums, like anything coming out that you want us to tell our audience about that? Oh, well, I'm telling them, uh, in, I recorded four of the songs that really helped me through the time with, I went through with my mom. One of them is yeah. going to be newer to most people, but just the, just some of the worship stuff I was listening to, and they're going to come out starting August 24th. There'll be a new single every right. Friday for a month. So th that's probably the, the next thing is just stay in tune to that, and we'll do more Power Perspective with Stacy. And yeah, and nice. So get awesome. get you on your socials and keep track on Instagram, which is what is that handle? At Anthony Evans Jr. Jr. Because somebody took my name. <laughs> At Anthony Evans Jr. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this. No problem. No problem. Thanks so much for the time, Anthony. We really appreciate it, man. Oh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Good to see yeah. you. See you, man. See you, bud. Bye. Guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that as much as James and I did and we yes. did. Um, 
if if you take nothing else away from that interview, know that Anthony yeah. and just looking at his infectious smile and his personality, he's just somebody that you would give anything to just hang around and be around. He's just yeah. a, he's that awesome of a guy. He's incredible. He's incredible mentally, and uh, we're just we're really thankful that that we got to have him and that you got to see it. That's right. He's such an inspiration. And if you want more of these interviews, you can always subscribe to our channel. And if you want to receive more bonus content, um, exclusive episodes, you can always support us on our Patreon page. So we want to thank you guys so much for joining us today. And uh, if you haven't already, you can follow us on all of our social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find us at Veritas 5. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Veritox. Here is to your next big idea. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum.